Hello everyone, this is the 8th grade math midterm review sheet. What We're going to start with number 1 and it says what is the solution to the equation below? Remember, you're going, anytime you see parentheses, you are going to use distributive property 2 times x is 2x and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2x minus 6 equals 2x minus 6 what is the answer to the solution to that equation you could stop right there and if you said infinitely many solutions you are correct now you could stop here and you could see that the expression is the same on both sides or you could subtract 2x on both sides and this is what you can have negative 6 equals negative 6 the same thing on both sides infinitely many solutions let's talk about this one when you see parentheses you always do distributive property so that's what I'm gonna do 2 times x is 2x 2 times 2 is 4 alright and you bring down the plus x and then on this side of the equal sign on the right side we're gonna multiply 1 third times 6 so when we do that we're going to press this button right here 1 over 3 and that's times 6 right so that is 2 so we're going to have 2x and then we're going to multiply 1 third again pressing that button right there 1 over 3 times Make sure you press the right button to get away from the bottom of that fraction times negative 3. And it is negative 1. So that's what we're going to put there. So before moving forward, just remember, you have three terms on the left side of this equation. So we are going to combine like terms. The like terms that we could combine are 2x and x because they are like terms. So we have 2x plus x is 3x plus 4, bring that down, equals 2x minus 1. Whenever we have variables on both sides, remember you subtract the 2x on both sides, subtract the 2x on both sides, get the smaller, try to get the smaller over to the larger, you have x plus 4 equals negative 1, and then you subtract 4 on both sides. This is a one solution, and the one solution is x equals negative 5. All right, and that's that. Number three on the midterm review says John paid Planet Burger Gym $50 membership fee plus a $10 training session per, per training session. So we have a plus sign there and the total for the month and you know that total always goes after an equal sign the total for the month was 440 write an equation that can be used to determine how many training sessions he took for the month so we have this membership fee the b is the membership fee it's only going to get paid once and the 10 is your m that's your slope it's going to get going to pay ten dollars per training session the total is equals 440 so putting that all together we're gonna have 10 uh, you don't have to put M let me just put X 10 X plus 50 equals 440 it says write an equation that can be used to solve. This is the answer. That's the equation. And you don't have to solve it. Well, let's go ahead and just practice solving it anyway. 50 minus 50. You're going to solve for x here. 10x equals 390. And then you divide by 10 and divide by 10 and you will have x equals 39 training sessions okay and that's it 
but I just want to make sure you understand that this is going to be a multiple choice question. The multiple choice question is going to ask you to pick an equation that represents what is up here in number three, not to actually solve it. All right, so here we go. Lines A and B are parallel. This is from unit one. The name the pair of angles that are alternate interior angles. We are going to name the pair of angles. Now, alternate interiors inside the parallel lines and across from each other. So I'm going to circle three and six. Angle three and six are alternate interior angles. Also, 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles inside and across from each other. Based on the figure above, that's the same figure, what, name all the pairs that are corresponding angles. I'm going to erase this. Corresponding is in the same location from the top. This number here, this 1, is in the top left. On the bottom, in this bottom four, the top left represents five, is represented by five. So we're going to say angle one and angle five. They're corresponding angles. Now we're going to go to two, and the corresponding angle is six. All right, so angle two and angle six. Again, the same location. This is in the upper right, and this is in the upper right of the bottom four. So we're going to go to three, which is in the lower left, and seven is also in the lower left. So you right there can make a C out of it or backwards C, and there's one more pair. Um, four and eight. So those are the those are all the corresponding angles, right? And that's it for those two questions. Number six. Find the value. This might be a little confusing, but see this H. It's missing. It, they want to know what number can you substitute into here to, that would result in infinitely many solutions. You know that infinitely many solutions is the same on both sides. Same on both sides of the equal sign. All right, so it has to be exactly the same as this, 8x plus 18. So what can I put here for h to make that 8x? Well, if I put a 1 there, 1 times 4 is not 8. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. And also, 2 times 9 is 18. So let's go ahead and substitute that in and see if it does work out. Um, so I'm going to place that 2 in for the H. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do distributive property on this side. And I have 8x plus 18 equals 2 times 4 is 8x. And then 2 times 9 is 18. So H would be equal to 2 for infinitely many solutions. All right. Number 7, solve. What is the solution to this equation? Beautiful. All right. Remember, you have three terms on this side. 1, 2, and 3. You want to get it down to two terms. So that means if you have three terms, you can combine like terms somewhere. All right. So the same thing right here, 5x and 2x, 7x plus 10. OK, that's the left side. Let's talk about, oh, I made a mistake. There is no other x. I cannot combine those terms. But I could combine 6 plus 4. 
and 6 plus 4 is 10. So I'm just going to put 7x, I'm going to bring this 7x down, plus 10. Notice that you have the same thing on both sides. And what did we say? That is it's the same expression on both sides, same expression. And that is infinitely, and you spell it I in fin it EOI many solutions. You can leave it like that, or you could take one step further. I'll put it in a different color. You could subtract 7x from both sides if you want. And this cancels and this cancels. 10 equals 10. Infinitely many solutions. The same on both sides. All right, number eight. In the figure below, we'll measure if angle two is 4x plus 10. We're going to put that right in for angle two. Place it right in the diagram. And angle 7 is 2x plus 20. It says to write an equation that can be used to solve for the missing angles. When you take a look at this, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. I know that looking at this angle, look how big this angle is. That's an obtuse angle. You see how big this angle is? That's an obtuse angle. That means these angles are equal to each other. They're congruent. Or you could circle one, you could circle one of them, and do the crisscross method going across just like this, so that you know that if the lines are touching, they are equal to each other. The last method is that these are alternate exterior angles. These are alternate exterior angles. And alternate exterior angles are equal to, they're congruent, they're equal to each other. So I'm going to set these up, 4x plus 10, because they're the same angle, same measure, 2x plus 20. And then I'm going to solve. It says then solve the equation. So I'm going to get the smaller x over to the larger x, just like that. This cancels. You have 2x plus 10 equals 20. Subtract 10 on both sides. And guess what? You have 2x equals 10. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x equals 5. But that's not what the missing angles are. You know, that's not the measure of the missing angles. That's just x. So let's go ahead and see if we could substitute in. 4 times 5 plus 10. All right, so this is not a good kind of, this is not a good question right here because I'm saying this is 30 degrees. That does not equal 30 degrees. This is an obtuse angle. It should be 130. Um, so this is, I'm just going to go with it. And this is 30. This is how you would do it. This is 30. All right, because they're equal to each other. Then you would take 180 and minus 30 and from it and you would get 150 so this would be 150 which is not correct because this is an up to that's an acute angle and this would be 150 and this would be 150 so just so you know that the angles are kind of switched up um this should be angle one this should be angle one and this should be angle eight for this to work out. Um, so I made a mistake with that. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Number nine. Solve for X. A lot of solving. And a lot of distributive property. So you have negative 6X. Negative 2 times a positive 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10. Bring down the 10x. Bring down the equal sign, bring down the 10x plus 14. Do you see on the left side? The left side is has three terms. Two of the terms need to be combined. So I'm going to highlight them. Actually, I'll box them out 
here's negative 6x and this is positive 10x. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4x. 4x minus 10 equals 10x plus 14. Get the smaller x over to the larger x. We always do that, try to do that so we could stay in the positive. This cancels, you get negative 10 equals 6x plus 14. You minus 14 on both sides. This cancels. And you have 6x equals negative 24. Divide by 6 on both sides. And we are negative 24 divided by 6 is negative 4. All right, any questions? When you see parentheses, you go ahead and use inverse operations um, all the way. All right, combine like terms when you see three terms on one side. All right, label each question uh, equation as linear or nonlinear. First off, let me just put up here y equals mx plus b. That's linear. And then nonlinear is anything with an exponent. next to the variable. All right, anything with an exponent next to the variable. Does this have an exponent next to the variable? No, it doesn't. This is linear. Does this have an exponent? Yes, it does. But is it next to the variable? No, it's not. This is linear. This is the reason why. 5 squared is 25, so this comes out to be 25 minus 4x, which is y equals mx plus b. Does this have an exponent next to the variable? Yes, it does. There's the variable. There's the exponent. This is nonlinear. Nonlinear. And does this have an exponent next to that variable? No um, so this is linear. The only one that does not have an exponent that's still nonlinear would be when the variable is in the denominator. So if we have uh, 5 over x, this is nonlinear. If you want to put that down, um, that's important to know. That is the that's the time that where you have um, the uh, in nonlinear without an exponent anywhere in sight. All right. All right. Number 11. Classify if it's good. If the trend line is a good or bad fit for the data, is this a good fit? Yeah, it looks good. Good fit. I don't know why I put goot. good fit it's in the center of all the points you know and it looks okay by the way this is a positive trend and a positive trend means you go up from left to right and also this is a strong trend a strong trend means the points are clustered around that that um, trend line. All right. This is not a good fit. No way. Ho. No way. All right. So this is not a good fit. Look at that line. If you drew that line, please don't draw that line. Don't draw this line. This is not a good fit. Not a good fit. And this is not a good fit. The only one that is a good fit is A, not a good fit. And this is too far up, right? So we got that, right? So the only one that is a good fit is A. All right, find the slope and y-intercept. If you can't get this one, oh, this is in y equals mx plus b. This is a great question because it's something that you could get right, 
right off the bat doesn't take much the m is the slope and the b represents the y intercept so the slope is the number before x which is this it's the m and this is the b don't forget when you put the b down that this is makes it a negative this is a negative 14. All right and that's it find the slope of the line you use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 all right x1 y1 x2 y2 and you just substitute into the formula when you go ahead and you put this down put the minus signs down this is from the formula these subtraction symbols right so it's 10 y2 minus y1 10 minus 4 and then it's 5 minus from the formula a negative 7 you see that double negative you could change that to a positive right now or you could just bring up your calculator like I do all right and let me just get this down all right so I'm gonna press this fraction symbol and I'm gonna put 10 minus 4 then I'm gonna press down to get to the denominator and I'm gonna do 5 minus a negative 7 see I didn't change it but the calculator is gonna figure that out for me I'm gonna press enter and you see I have 6 over 12 and then I'm gonna press simp that button right there says simp simplify and then you press enter and again it tells you to simplify it again so I'm gonna press simp again and press enter one more time and then that's it you see there's no arrow so it's a half so the slope is a half use your calculator and reduce all fractions all right and that's it number 14 write the equation of a line as a slope that's the M and this is the B so we need that Y equals MX plus B format and we are ready to go we're gonna take this slope put it right before the X and we're gonna take this B whoops I put plus nope it's a minus 8 so we're gonna put that down just like that questions no okay you can't ask anyway all right write an equation that represents the line shown on the coordinate grid any time that they ask for an equation just put this down this is slope intercept form because it has the slope and the intercept in this equation so we need the slope and we need the y-intercept I'm just gonna put a dot right where the y-intercept is and you could see that this y-intercept is zero that's the B B equals zero so I'm gonna put that down now I have to pick two points I'm gonna pick two points all along this line I'm gonna put that zero zero and this one right here they give you points you could pick the other two points if you want just be careful I am going to create my triangle this is my run the x-axis represents the run and this is my rise the y-axis it's not one this goes up to 80 you see how this from 0 to 80 that's 80 so I'm gonna put rise over run and that is the formula for slope rise over run all right we're not using the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we have a graph and so the rise is represented by 80 the run is represented by 2 that is 40 so write the equation you have a slope of 40 and you have a y intercept of 0 so it's y equals 40x and you're done that is the equation in y equals mx plus b format and that's it all right 
find the slope and y-intercept of the linear function below. All right, the slope and the y-intercept of the linear function below. First off, we want to we want to just tell you right away that the slope is not the number before x in this case. The reason why that is is because it's not in y equals mx plus b format. Remember I told you it has to be in this format for you to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and solve for y. Solving for y. To get y alone you have to move this 3x over to the other side so you if you have a positive 3x you subtract the 3x on both sides. This cancels. You get 6y equals negative 3x plus 18. Then you are going to see if we could get y alone by dividing by 6 on both sides. This cancels. y is alone. Now, negative 3 over 6. If you put that in, negative 3 over 6, and you press simp, enter, negative a half. All right, I'm not saying that you couldn't do that by hand or in your head. It's just that if you can't, use the calculator. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So the slope is negative a half and the y-intercept is 3. And that's the end of that question. All right. So if a, this is a tricky question. If a line contains the points listed, find the equation in slope intercept form. You're going to look at this and you're going to say, wait a minute, why have they given me so many points? You only need two, right? You only need two points. So slope intercept form is remember y equals mx plus b. Do not pick the negatives. You only need two points right? Two points only. So I'm going to pick this as my x1 and this as my y1. This as my x2. This as my y2. To figure out the slope, guess what I have to do? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is finding slope. So I'm just going to go ahead and put 10 minus 8 and 3 minus 1. So that is 2 over 2 and that's 1. But I need the y-intercept and there's no x of 0 and that's a problem. Right so there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. I'm going to use the point slope formula. The reason why I'm using this is because I have a point, I have a lot of points, and I have the slope. So my point slope formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I have y minus, and I already have labeled y1 as 8, so I'm going to put that in there. And then my slope is simply 1. x minus x1, which is 1, easy, nice and easy. y minus 8 equals 1 times x and 1 times negative 1 is the same thing, x minus 1. All right, so I have 1 times x, which is x, and 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. Then I just have to solve this for y, and I am done. Add 8 on both sides. y equals x plus 7. Equation in point in slope-intercept form. Another way to do this, this is method number 1. 
Another way to do this, this is method two, is to use y equals mx plus b. Okay, so you could do this with any points and you could solve, what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation to solve for the, um, the y-intercept. All right, so we're going to solve for b because that's what we don't have b. So I'm going to use, again, for y, I'm going to put 8. For m, I have 1, right? And then x, I'm going to use the 1 because that's my x1. And then plus b. The b is going to stay like that because you want to solve for b. So 8, 1 times 1 is 1 plus b. Then you minus 1 on both sides and you get b equals 7. Once you have the b and the m, you could make this equation. And you could put y equals x because 1x is the slope plus 7. That's method number two. Method number three is actually using the points and the patterns. Do you notice that um, that uh, negative one, this jump right here, negative one to one is a plus two, and six to eight is a plus two. If you only add, if you're only adding one, that would be x of zero, and that means you would add one here, which is seven, and that is the y-intercept. 0, 7 would be that point that's missing. Whatever way you feel more comfortable, I like the point slope formula the best. Um, you could you could use this as well. Um, but that's it. All right, number 18. Which interval did John take a break? All right, so he walks the fastest. He's walking. Time is going on. Distance is being covered here. Right? He left his home, walked three blocks to his school, as shown in the accompanying graph here, right here is two blocks away from his school. Then all of a sudden something happens right here, B to C. He took a break. Time is going by, but there's no distance being covered. He's stuck at two blocks away from his school. He's not covering any distance. So B to C took a break. Number 19, find the equation in slope intercept form again. So we need y equals mx plus b. The slope and we need the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the easiest thing to really just identify. It's always where the, it, this line crosses the y-axis. And Now I don't know why I did that. It's, it's right here. So, taking a look, the line crosses at that number. So I'm going to put 150 down right away. Now I need two points. Well, hey, I just made a point there, and I'm going to make another point here. Try to pick points that are close to each other um, and whole number coordinates only. So I am going to create my triangle. My run is 1 goes from 0 to 1 but my rise goes from 150 to 180 160 170 180 30 not 1 not 1 over 1 so the rise over run is 30 over 1 so find the equation y equals 30x plus 150 all right that's it. That's all. It's done. Good. Number 20. Identify the correlation, positive, negative, linear, nonlinear. We're going to just go ahead and draw our trend line right across. Okay, so we have a trend line that goes right across. This slope is not positive or negative, but the slope is zero. This is linear because it is straight and it is strong because all of those points are clustered around the trend line. All right. Um, what about B? Can you draw anything? This one has no association. 
you cannot predict a trend on this. You cannot draw a trend line. You cannot do anything with this. It's no association. And that is the answer for that. All right. So we are going to draw a trend line right down the center of all of these points right there. And I'm going to move that and just fix it a little bit. So it's like right about there. Okay. So this is going down from left to right down a negative trend. Is it linear or not? This is linear. Listen, no scatter plot with the exception of this one, but not many scatter plots are perfectly linear like a line graph, right? But the thing is, when you're talking about linear, you're not talking about a curve or anything that would make it nonlinear. This does not curve, so this is linear. And this is a strong correlation because the points are clustered around the trend line. If it was further away from the trend line, then it would be weak. It is not, so it's strong. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw my trend line here, trying to go through the center of all the points, and there it is, right? Uh, it doesn't have to start at zero, zero, by the way. So is this positive or negative? It is a positive association. It goes up from left to right, right? Um, is it linear? Yes, it is linear because it doesn't curve. And also, this is a weak correlation. All right, this is weak because the points are a little bit far from the trend line. They're not clustered really closely to that trend line, which makes it weak. So that is everything. That you have to know for number 20. All right, number 21. Uh, does the scatter plot show, shown below, shown below, have an outlier? If so, circle the outlier. There it is. Yes, it does. Outlier. And this would be a six, comma. 60 that's the that those are the coordinates if they ask you anything about that um and that's it that's the outlier away from all the other points it's one point away from the points all right write a relation that is a function so we're talking about a relation a relation could be a table it could be um, anything where you could have uh, coordinates. So I'm going to just do 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7. As long as my x values do not repeat, x values don't repeat, it is a function. Um, Every X must have its own Y. All right. Um, so just like in a uh, on a like a graph, like just taking a look at a graph, and if you kind of did like this that's a function as well you would do a vertical line test and the vertical line test would only go through once this would be a function right this is a function right relation that is not a function okay so I'm just gonna go here two three three four three six uh, one, uh, 
uh, 4, 7, and 5, 8. So the point that repeats is 3. 3 goes is attached, goes to two different y values. Every x does not have its own y. So just taking a look at this, if they asked you which point can it, could you remove from this relation to make it a function, you would remove either 3, 4 or 3, 6 because then the x's wouldn't repeat. And that's that. Okay, so a scatter plot shown below um, could be used to approximate the rate at which water flows through a garden hose. And it give you the equation, which is just awesome. Uh, if they give you this equation, all you have to do is substitute this. They're asking how, if the rate in gallons per minute continues, approximately how many gallons of water will flow through the hose in 45 minutes? Well, that's pretty easy because you're just going to go ahead in 45 minutes. There's 45 right here. So it's off the graph. It's somewhere up there somewhere right but I'm not using the graph it's off the graph so I'm like I'm not trying to figure out what that is so it's not 24 though so you can cancel that out the graph is this is 24 right here but anyway let's go back to the equation and substitute in and the X this is gonna be your X 40 the minutes so grab your calculator and you have four fifths times 45 minutes, 36 and uh, that's it. Sub stir toot. When in doubt, when in doubt, substitute, when in doubt. Right, and that'll give you the answer to a lot of questions. All right, number 24, what's the rate of change? Oh, again, the rate of change is slope. So we're gonna do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm gonna do x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, and we're going to put minus minus, no negatives, 15 minus 10, and 3 minus 2, m equals 5 over 1, which is 5, 5. What's the initial value? Oh, wait a minute, x, this is the x. So, holy mackerel, what is going on there? Okay, so this is the x. Let me get back to that. All right, this is the y. Why put X down? Now I'm all crazy right there. So I think the easiest way to do this is to actually start on the bottom, right? So it goes from 6 to 5. Then it jumps by 2. Then it jumps by 1. Then if it jumps by 1 again, what is the X1, right? And if it jumps by one, the X is zero. Okay, so minus one, minus one. So when it jumps by one, when it goes to, when it subtracts one, what's the Y doing? It's minus and five, All right? This, it, it minuses two from the X and then it minuses 10. Then it minus, goes back to one again and then it minuses five and then all right, so I'm going to minus 5 again and get this to 5. And then minus 5 again. And my first point, 0, 0. When x is 0, the other number is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0. If you do not know what I just did, 
please use the point slope formula. All right. The, they're asking what the initial value is. The initial value is zero, and this is the slope. So you answered the question. But if you don't know what I just did here with the table, just go ahead and put y1, your y1 in. My y1 was 10. The slope I came out with was 5. The x minus x1, which is 2. The x1 I labeled as 2. Then I am going to go ahead and um, solve for y. But I'm going to do distributive property first. 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. You add 10 to both sides. To solve for y, this cancels, and you get y equals 5x. That From this, you could tell that the y-intercept is 0, right? and that the slope is 5. Well, you had to have the slope before anyway. All right, you could do it that way. You could also use the y equals mx plus b this is this is method number two i'm going to say and then using the tables method number one and then this is method number three you only have to do one way um my y is 10 my slope is five my x when y is 10 is two and I can, i'm going to just go ahead and solve for b right minus 10 minus 10 and guess what b equals 0 that's the initial value all right so either way get the answer that's it all right and last question identify if each relation is a function or not a function look at just the x's first just the x look at the x look at the x values first all right now i am going to highlight the x's if they don't repeat it's a function okay we're good function every x has its own y Okay, let's go again. Again, let's see. None of the X's repeat. Guess what? Every X has its own Y function. Don't even look at the Y's. Don't even look at them. Function. Woohoo. The X's don't repeat. Every X has its own Y. All right. Whoa. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So 2 goes to 6. That's okay. 2 goes to 6. But 1 goes to 4. And 1 goes to 5. That's not allowed. This is not a function. What makes it not a function is that 1 is attached to 4. And 1 is attached to 5. It has two different y values for the same x you can't have that that is not a function okay that ends our video review of the midterm review sheet hope that helped you out thank you for watching